the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, ye pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Hilltops proclaim it, ye plains. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Coming in and coming again. Jesus is coming again. of earth tell the vast wandering throng Jesus is coming again tempests and whirlwinds the anthem prolong Jesus is coming again coming again coming again. this evening and i greet each one of you i give all the glory to god the father god the son and god the holy spirit thank you pastor mohan for the privilege thank you all the brothers and sisters of our church uh, for uh, joining us this evening and uh, we praise god for this uh, technology is very very good but sometimes it has its own challenges and uh, always i'm saying that if there is one good thing, if there is any one good thing which has uh, brought, uh, uh, because of COVID, COVID has brought all sorts of challenges uh, for us uh, around the world. But only one good thing I can think of is uh, we started using Zoom more and more because of uh, COVID. So uh, something we can see in the midst of uh, all the now, so much of uh, bad, at least little good and a little ray of hope in this one. That is uh, uh, Zoom. So I'm uh, connecting with you uh, from far here in your nation. So we are in uh, Newcastle here. So we are uh, connecting with you. Let me uh, offer a word of prayer before we proceed tonight. Loving Father, we want to thank you. We need your special blessing. Bless all of your children, our brothers and sisters, joining from various places so that they can listen to your word 
this evening. Thank you, Lord, because we pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My brothers and sisters, shocking events in the last few years. Only in the last few years we are uh, just uh, focusing because from the time coronavirus uh, now started and started uh, uh, so bad and all of us know it uh, affects all around the world, including this uh, nation, your nation and our families. Surely all of us are thinking that we are in the last days. So I started using a slogan. We are in the ending of the end time. We are in the ending of the end time. Yes, all of us as Seventh-day Adventists, we know from 1844, the world is in the end time because investigative judgment started in heaven. But now we have come to the ending of that end time. That's why we are going to learn this week from the Bible, especially the prophecies, how the things are happening. Some of the strange events. When Jesus was on this earth, he taught his disciples. That belongs to each one of us. That information is for every believer in every generation. We read about the signs of the second coming, all of us know. In Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, Luke chapter 17, and Luke chapter 21. These four chapters, we are acquainted. The last day events are recorded there, which Jesus explained. But all of those events are fulfilling around us. We read in Luke chapter 21, verse 28. Luke chapter 21, verse 28, which says, and now that when you see these things, lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Which means when we see any shocking event, which is foretold in the Bible, foretold by Jesus 2,000 years ago, when we notice that, that should not give us a, any panic or we should not be in any fear. Rather, we should be happy because our redemption is just coming near. That is the end of the world, second coming of Jesus. That's our hope. My brothers and sisters, I want to bring to your attention a series of events which took place in the last few years only. One, first one I want to present to your uh, consideration. That is volcanic eruption in Tonga Island. Tonga Island. That was Jan 25th or Jan 15 last year. That is 2022. The first month, 15th day. That was in Tonga. Tonga Islands, which are uh, close to New Zealand. And there was the volcanic eruption. Where was the volcano? Volcano was the, at the bottom of the floor of the ocean. Bottom of the ocean. And that erupted. But what is so special about that, which never happened in the history, when the volcano erupted under the sea water, under the ocean waters, the waters are so deep, so many kilometers uh, or so many miles uh, deep. But so much ash, so much ash, some people call it soot, that that ash came out of the water. Normally, if there is ash, that is the that fine powder, and it dissolves in the water. But it came up above the uh, ocean water, and you can notice... Uh, since we are not able to share the slides tonight, we'll work it out. Uh, tomorrow I can show all of them, but we will not go through all the explanation, but I can show you. But I want you to see, this is on the internet also, that the whole island Tonga, all of their airports, all of their roads, everything was just filled with that ash, several feet. And for the next one week, they could not clear all of that ash which was piled up. It came from the bottom of the ocean of the volcano. And uh, for the next one week, they could not land any aeroplane, any helicopter, any rescue teams. Nobody could land there because so much of ash piled up several feet deep on the runway 
on the roads. This is what happened. Again, I want to point to your kind of consideration. Never, never happened such a thing in the history. But why it is happening now? It's because surely the end of the world is coming. That's a good news for us. That is Jesus is coming sooner than what we are expecting. Some of us may be thinking, oh, it may take so many years. But I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, this evening, Jesus is coming sooner than what we are expecting, what we are imagining. There's another event. That is, of course, all of us know Russian army and their uh, now aggression on Ukraine. So much damage, so much damage done. And uh, so much of destruction is st still taking place. Now, war started over 15 months ago. Still is going on. But something so unique, something so unique. That is, I know so many people displaced, uh, displaced from their home. They lost their life. Some of them left uh, everything what they have. And just they ran away from their own country. So sad. We are praying for them. And uh, two days ago, on the Sabbath day, I had the privilege to meet several of them in uh, Ireland in our church in the town of Cork. I met them. They, they were worshipping. They came as uh, there to protect their lives, to save their lives as refugees. They came. But God is so gracious to them. But one thing so unique, one thing is so unique, that is this Russian war on Ukraine. It took a new turn. Some of you may, uh, may have uh, noticed, you might have noticed that on the news. That was on May 30, 30, May 30. What happened on that day? That some of the now drones of Ukraine, they attacked Moscow, the capital city of uh, Russia. And also the news says it hit some targets close to the residence, close to the house of Putin, President Putin of Russia. Can you imagine? They never, never had any thought even in the dream. One day, Ukrainians can attack Moscow through some drone or uh, through some their warplane, whatever they were. They could not because they thought it is impossible for them to reach out and attack Moscow. But that happened. So much damage done to several buildings. We don't have all the news because that is a communist controlled news network. But surely there was damage done. And they were shaken. They were shaken. The Russians and the Russian army and the president also. But they're so desperate. All of us know when they started the war 15 months ago that they thought maybe within two days, three days, at the most one week, they'll be able to take over all of Ukraine and uh, occupy it. But 15 months down the line, they could not do that. So they're so desperate. And also that is a, a kind of a, for them in the eyes of the world, so much disgrace to them because Russia, one of the uh, best military powers in the world and uh, one of the superpowers, so to speak. And they could not do it for the last 15 months. A small nation called Ukraine, they could not occupy it. But in their desperate situation, will they one day use nuclear weapons? If they use nuclear weapons, what that is going to be? Will the world wait silently if they use the nuclear weapons? Will it lead to the Third World War? If it is so, what's going to happen? Then the sword is hanging on the neck of the entire world. That is going to be threat. That is going to be threat to the entire world. My brothers and sisters, yes, these events never happen, but they're unfolding so rapidly. And uh, what is going to happen? That's only the history is going to tell us. That's why, yes, we are living in a dangerous days, very unpredictable time. That's why we need to know. But 
in spite of the war in Russia or that is in Ukraine. But God's hand is still with us. And uh, most of us have heard and even seen that uh, slide also that one of the Russian missiles, one of the Russian missiles fell or landed in the churchyard of Seventh-day Adventist Church on May 8th last year, 2022. Close to the church, Seventh-day Adventist Church, our church, there. And uh, now, as most of us heard and read there that uh, information, that several hundreds of people just took shelter in our Seventh-day Adventist Church building. In the basement, some people were hiding in the church building and whichever little space is there, just they were uh, hiding, thinking that the Russian army may come to attack them and kill them. They wanted to protect, but when they noticed that a big Russian missile just landed a few feet away from our church, they must have thought that is the last moment they are breathing on this earth. The next moment they will be blown into pieces. That's what they expected. Anybody would expect that only because such a big missile. But praise be to God that missile landed only just a short distance from our Seventh-day Adventist church building. But it did not explode. Praise be to God. God protected our church building. God protected the lives of all of those people who took shelter in our church. This is what God is doing. In spite of the chaos, in spite of the misery and suffering in the world, God is still faithful. And his faithfulness is so fresh. He's so faithful every morning, every moment in our lives. That's what Jesus is doing. He will continue to do. In spite of our weaknesses and failures, as Reverend Church members, still, Seventh-day Adventist Church is God's church. This is his church. That's why he protected his people and their lives. We read in Testimonies, Volume 9, page 11, the last day events will be rapid. It's, it doesn't require 100 years or 200 years. And rapid. That is so quickly these things are unfolding. There's also another event I want you to notice. Again, it, this is there on the news and it is still there on the internet. You can check it online. That, uh, that is in China, March 11th, this year, March 11th, two months ago, March 11th, that there was a rain of worms, rain of worms. We never heard something like this in the history. At any time in the past, no rain of worms. When rain comes, we know sometimes uh, hailstones fall and the drops of rain, droplets. But this time in China, worms just falling from the sky. How in the world? The scientists are confused. They had no clue why this happened, how this happened. Worms rained in China and in their capital city. You can check that one. That was on March 11th this year. And there was also another shocking event. That itself is a shocking event. Worms raining from the sky. Never happened in the history. Why it is happening now? The scientists and the people of the world, they have no clue. But as God's people, we have the clue. And we have that understanding. Jesus is coming sooner. That's why strange and shocking events are taking place in different parts of the world. I want you to also notice another one. There was a rain of frogs. Rain of frogs. Several thousand frogs. When the rain started, along with the rain, several thousand frogs just fell from the sky. That is so shocking. And the big, big frogs, yellow color frogs. Uh, I have that slide also. We'll try tomorrow. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience today. We'll try to sort it out uh, by tomorrow. So, rain. This have rain of frogs. This happened in, uh, in the state from where I come from and Pastor Mohan comes from and in that state, uh, a, a, a town called Karnul that happened on, uh, that is uh, just before COVID it took place. Then there is also another shocking event uh, in the 
state where I live and I'm teaching as a professor in our Adventist, Pfizer Adventist University, where your pastor studied several years ago. And in that state, in that area, there is a lake, a big lake called Lonar Lake, Lonar Lake. And suddenly on uh, July 22, 2020, during the COVID time, 2020, 2020, July 22, suddenly the whole big lake turned to red color, like blood, red color, like blood. And again, several scientists were sent by Indian government to study what happened, why it happened. They had no clue. They did not, uh, uh, they could not give any answer why it happened, why it happened. And also a similar situation in China, Yanche River, the one of the largest uh, and the longest rivers in the world. This is the third largest uh, river in the world. The whole river became red like blood color. And that happened on September 9th, uh, 2012, 2012. Again, and uh, uh, it is reported whether it is in that lake, in the place where I work in that state or here in China, when the water turned to red in color, all the fish, all the frogs, all the tortoise, all the living uh, creatures in the waters, they died on the spot. That is so shocking. And scientists in China also have no clue why the entire river water turned to blood in color. They have no clue. But my brothers and sisters, yes, that happened. And we are told in the third plague that all the water in the rivers and the lakes and the uh, canal or wherever there is water, that is going to turn to blood in color. We, we will uh, study that one more details tomorrow. But there's also another thing. That is the sea water, the sea and the ocean also will turn to blood in the third, uh, second plague, in the second plague. We read that all of that in Revelation chapter 16 about the second and third plague and other plagues. And we will study them tomorrow in all the details. But definitely that in, uh, in Australia, Sydney, and uh, the sea water turned to blood in color. Sea water turned to blood in color. That was 25th July, 25th July, 2014, 2014. And not a little water. 100 kilometers from the seashore, from the coastal area, and from the seashore, 100 kilometers into the sea, everything, all the water became blood. I took that information from the internet. It is there. The pictures are there still. And all the fish died. Again, scientists have no clue, except saying maybe that is something like a fungi, algae, something of that nature. But they have no clue. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, why these uh, shocking events are taking place. Because Jesus is coming sooner than what we're expecting. Jesus is coming soon. That's why these uh, strange and shocking events are taking place. And also, each one of us uh, noticed, and it is still fresh in our memory, that is, this year, on Feb 6th, the second month, sixth day, that was the big earthquake, a massive earthquake which destroyed so many people and their lives and their homes in Turkey and Syria. And the government estimated a death toll was 50,000, 50,000. That was the government statistics, government information. But some private people, some private uh, news channels, they put the death toll so high, something like close to 100,000 lives. All of them perished without any notice. But all of us realize that those people who perished within a matter of a couple of minutes, they are not uh, more wicked than us or those who are alive. We are not more righteous than those people. Earthquake never informs and comes. And we don't know when any natural calamity may hit the area where we live. That's why, my brothers and sisters, this is a a reminder, 
a reminder for each one of us that surely Jesus is coming. And again in the same year, uh, this year only, in the month of March, month of March, that was March 20, again an earthquake in Ecuador. This is in South America. And there, so several people lost their lives within a matter of few seconds. That's all. They were not prepared. They did not know. Any earthquake doesn't give, give a information in advance and come. We don't have any prior information. With all the technology in the world and the people and the scientists are not able to predict when, where the earthquake is going to occur. We don't know. And we are given this information in the Bible. Jesus told us, gave us the warning. Luke chapter 21, verse 11. Luke chapter 21, verse 11, which says, in the last days, there will be so many earthquakes and pestilences and famines and fearful sights in the sky and pestilence. And all of us know pestilence, another word is some sickness, sudden sickness or some strange sickness for which there is no known credible treatment. There is no known treatment. That's what happened to coronavirus. But there will be other very, very damaging, destructive, and very frightening pestilences are going to come in this world, which is we call the seven last plagues. And also there is famine in many, many places. And uh, you think of Pakistan, how it is going through, Yemen, Sudan, and also you can uh, imagine uh, Sri Lanka in the recent uh, uh, months. Several nations, according to the information, you can check on the internet that there are 93 nations, 93 nations which are going through famine. Thank God we have enough to eat. But God's children, when they are in need, if they are faithful to God, God never leaves them. All of us know that in the time of Moses and Israelites in the wilderness, they didn't have anything to eat. They ran out all the food grains which they carried from Egypt. And that was a wilderness. No shop and no village, no town, no city to purchase anything. So they were just depending on God. They were crying. Why did you bring us, O Moses and Aaron? But God knows that the situation where they were and they, their hunger, God knows that they were in the wilderness, they need food. But God permitted that so that they can depend on God by faith. My brothers and sisters, in this ending of the end time, these last days, we have to learn to depend on God for every small need as well as big need. God will take care of. God sent what? Manna faithfully every morning except on the Sabbath day. Because Sabbath day is God's day. We should worship him. Surely this Sabbath, I want to be with you. I'm going to meet you. Uh, I'll be in London by Wednesday evening. By Harlow, I'm going to come. I'll stay there and I'll meet you in person. We will spend time together. But definitely learn. We have to learn, each one of us, to learn to depend on God by faith for every spiritual need as well as physical need, every small need as well as big need. And all of us know that in uh, Angola, one of these African countries in the great continent of Africa, and six months ago, I was in Kenya. What a lovely people. And all of you, my brothers and sisters, I am uh, just so much eager to meet you. But in that uh, Angola, that little village called Namba. I know each one of us know that. You must have read it and seen that one. Again, after this meeting, see that video again. Namba, N-A-M-B-A, Namba, small village in Angola. Just you can type Manna in Angola. All the information in the video and information comes. And what an amazing thing. God is raining Manna around the seventh day Adventist church building. Can you imagine? In spite of our weaknesses, in spite of our failures, still, Seventh-day Adventist church is God's church, the remnant church, God's true church in this ending of the end time. That's why God is sending manna to his people who are in need, who had need for food. God is just 
performing this miracle. Yes, before God, children of Israel entered into the promised land, God sent manna. Now, before we enter into the heavenly canon, again, God is sending manna in Namba, in Angola. Praise be to God. That's why my brothers and sisters, let us depend on Jesus and on the Bible so that we will not depart. And also, all of us know, during the, now, in the midst of coronavirus time, and uh, now, that was in the first wave, that April 4, no, April 1st, month 4, day 1, April 1st, and 2020, 2020, and all, all of us have noticed that many people in Italy, in the nation of Italy, what did they do? They cast the money, their money is euros, we know, all of us know that. They cast it in the streets in Italy. Why? Because their loving father, who was so rich, and he perished because of the coronavirus. He died. They spent so much money. Money could not save that life of that rich father, loving father. He died. And the family was so much depressed. Money could not save the life of my daddy. What is the use of this money? They cast it on the road, on the streets, or that loving mother. And the money, all the money could not save the life of that loving mother. So there was so much despondency they had. So they cast the money out into the streets. And maybe that money could not save the, their only son spent so much money, but they could not, money could not save. Or their only daughter, money could not save the life of the daughter. And she perished because of the coronavirus. So that's why there was so much uh, now dejected, disgusted. They cast the money into the streets. My brothers and sisters, money cannot save our life. Only Jesus can save. And if we trust in Jesus, Jesus is our savior. Jesus is our protection. Jesus is our security. Jesus is our immunity. Jesus is our protection. Only Jesus can save us. Nothing can save us on this earth. All the money in the world cannot save the life of somebody from dying. That's why Jesus taught, told us, Jesus taught to us. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20, it says, Now, lay your treasures in heaven. Yes, all the money in the world cannot save us. But if you lay our treasures in heaven, which means by being faithful to God, by giving tithe and offering, and also spending some extra money, for his glory, for his honor, for Bible study, for evangelism. Because we know the message and we are getting ready for second coming of Jesus. Out there, there are people who do not know about Jesus. Out there are so many millions and millions around us. They do not know that Jesus is coming soon. What are you doing, my brother? What are you doing, my sister? Other than your tithe, other than your uh, faithful offerings each Sabbath. What are you doing with your money? Because money is not going to take us to heaven. That's why lay your treasures by spending some money, extra money for God's evangelism to spread the gospel. You do something with your money, with your time, with your talents. We are told in early writings, page 56 and 57. Book early writings, page 57, 56 and 57. In the last days, before second May coming, people will be just crying and say, oh, I should have used my money for God's work, for evangelism. But it is too late. I can't buy, I can't sell. And in the last days, they can't even withdraw their money. They can't, uh, they can't even take the money from their bank account, from their ATM. They can't even do that. Because everything will be frozen by the governments. Then what your money will do to anyone? So people will cry. I should have used my money. I should have used my property. But that, that's going to be too late. What are you doing, my brother, my sister, to get this word across? And we are told in the last days, that kind of a time is going to come. We read in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17, which says, everybody must receive that mark. Whether rich or poor, great or small, everybody must receive. Without which, verse 17, Revelation 13, 17, they can't buy or sell. Those days are just very, very, very near to each one of us. My brother, my sister, 
Are you making necessary spiritual preparation to go to heaven? Are you making necessary spiritual preparation to meet Jesus and meet Sky within a short time from now? And now the banks are failing. Banks are becoming bankrupt. And all of us are acquainted. Silicon Valley Bank in USA that failed. It became bankrupt. Thousands and thousands of uh, people who had accounts and they kept their money. They were just saving their money. Now they're crying because the bank has failed. Bank became bankrupt. They shut the bank. Likewise, another bank, Signature Bank in New York. Signature Bank in New York. Another influential bank. Another influential bank, Swiss National Bank, Switzerland National Bank. That also shut down because bank became bankrupt. And I made a little study on the internet. And it says 1,720 banks around the world. 1,720 banks around the world failed and shut down. People lost all of their money. My brother, my sister, where are you? What is going on? Where is your trust? Trust and say, oh, I have enough money in the bank. I have enough money in my account. I have enough money in my ATM. Are you so comfortable and secure because of some money you have? My brothers and sisters, bank after bank is failing. Soon, we may also face the same situation. That's why Jesus is talking to each one of us. Look at Jesus. Depend on Jesus by faith. These are shocking events which never expected. Nobody expected it in the world. Only happening in the last few years. Why? Jesus is coming. That's why this coronavirus pandemic has swept away so many billionaires. Millennials. They're gone. Nobody expected. Never expected. Shocking events which swept the world. And though we have some respite, but still, this we are in the time of the ending of the end time. Dangerous time. That's why, my brothers and sisters, let us lean on Jesus. We are living in the ending of the end time. But when you see these things, don't panic. Don't get fear. Rather, be happy. Lift up your heads. As we read in Luke chapter 21, verse 28. Because our salvation is drawing so near. That's why this evening, I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, God be with each one of us so that realize what is happening around us. And notice, in spite of our busy life, our work and our education, what our little business, whatever you are doing, but open your eyes and open your ears to see some of these shocking events God is sending as a sign, clear sign for each one of us so that we will know and say, Jesus is coming. I and my family need to make the necessary spiritual preparation. If that is your decision this evening, my brother, my sister, wherever you are, that there are many shocking events during this week. We will explore them. We will study them from God's word. Tomorrow, read Revelation 16 in advance a couple of times by prayer. And we will go through what is going to happen to this world. That's why my brother and my sister, I want to appeal to each one of you, wherever you are, young and old, as wherever you are, and make a decision and say, Lord, I want to be your faithful son. I want to live as your faithful son. I want to live as your faithful daughter. I want to live and bring glory and honor to you as the members of the remnant church, knowing this truth. Make a decision. God is going to bless you. And if you have not yet made a choice, not yet made a decision to take baptism, though you know the truth, this is the day to make a decision so that you can be baptized soon one day. That's why I want to appeal to each one of you. If you make a decision to follow Jesus and his word and be a faithful son and daughter to bring glory and honor to Jesus, I want to conclude this message with a word of prayer.
Let's pray. Loving Father, we want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for this time. Bless each person who is connected on Zoom, wherever they are. Bless them, their families, whatever the challenges they're facing. Lord, take care of those challenges. Bless them, Lord. Lord, we need your special grace so that we may open our eyes and open our ears to see the signs of the second coming fulfilling all around us so that we may make necessary spiritual preparation to meet you soon in the clouds of heaven. Bless each one of us and send us in your peace because I pray in Jesus' loving name. Amen. My Amen. brothers and sisters, please uh, uphold in your personal prayers so that Amen. God can use each one of us and God can bless us. My wife hand over the time to pastor for the rest of the remaining program. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharad Prabhu. I think we all have been stirred up. You know, we all know things are happening, but somehow the seriousness is not there. Listening to him, I felt there's so much we need to really pull up our socks and say it's time to get up and prepare ourselves. We are so relaxed, especially in the West. We live by sight more than faith because we look for our needs around and we think it's okay. But the book, imagine 93 countries in famine, things happening around the world. And as Ellen White says, in the last days, the things will be rapid ones. And the digital currency and all sorts of things and artificial intelligence that's trying to come. And, and I'm very sure that before we could even think, things will change and we will be taken by surprise. So thank you, Dr. Sharath Babu, for reminding us. As I was listening, I was reminded of a quotation from C.S. Lewis, the, the most prominent scholar from here in England. He says, God whispers to us in our pleasure, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. And he says, it is a megaphone to rouse a deaf world. So he, he is trying to address the problem of pain and he says, God uses pain to open our deaf ears to listen to him. I'm here, listen to me. I think what Dr. Sharath Babu told us tonight is the crisis all around, the things that are happening is that kind of a trumpet sound to each one of us to raise us from our deaf ears to see what is happening around and prepare ourselves. No money, no fame, no job, no relation, no husband, no child, no pleasure can save apart from a strong personal relationship with God. And I want to, I like the way he put it, the times that we are living in, he says, we are at the end of the end time. So true, so true. We are at the end of the end time. May these thoughts inspire us. May these thoughts open our hearts, open our minds to give ourselves completely, renew our lives committed to him. Let no money and nothing come between us and God. Because as he pointed out, how many million, how many rich people with all the wealth at their disposal and medical facilities, the best in the world, could not survive the COVID-19. What about you and me? It's because of God's mercies, we are alive today. Let's recommit our lives in complete surrender to him. So that such a situation to come to us, a crisis of such a nature would attack us. We have nothing to fear because we serve a God who loves us and saves our lives. So thank you once again, Dr. Sharath Prabhu. And we are, we are waiting to hear the rest of the week, all the things about the second coming tomorrow and the rest of the week. I pray, let's pray that we will have no more internet glitches. We'll be able to see those lights as well and get acquainted. Let's close this with a song and I will do the prayer. After that, the mics will be open to share our thoughts with Dr. Sharad Bhandi. Let's have the closing song.
gracious Father. Thank you for the hope we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for speaking to our hearts tonight about the crisis all around us. Lord, help us to be awakened. Speak to our deaf ears. Open our eyes, spiritual eyes, to see the times that we are living in. We are reminded that we are living in the end of the end time. Pray, Lord, that we will be conscious of this. And the signs all around us will speak to us, convict us to recommit our lives, surrender ourselves completely to you, so that when we are affected by these things, our faith will not be shaken. May we not put our trust in princes, nor in horses, nor in chariots, but in the name of the Lord. Pray, Lord, for throughout this week, you will continue to use your servant, Dr. Sharath Babu, to speak to us so that we will be changed and be transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Bring us back again tomorrow evening to listen to your word again. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.